Hey, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Jeff. This is Stuff I Made. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about my hot wire foam cutter. I'll talk about its features, its design. Um, I'll talk about all the different jigs that I've got for it. Also, one particular jig that you won't have ever seen before unless you follow me on Instagram or Facebook. So that's worth sticking around for. Um, I'll talk about the build video, which will will follow. Um, there'll be an electric diagram in that. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Also, if you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up, a like. Please do comment, ask questions, tell me what I've done wrong, um, which I'm sure some of you will. But anyway, let's take a look now. So here it is, this is the base. The main area is formica laminated onto um, some birch ply. The centerpiece is a piece of aluminium rod cut off at about 25 mil thick. So it acts a bit like a heat sink, but also is an area for the wire to go through. This nichrome wire is a 28 gauge nichrome wire. Um, and then I have a black epoxy ring around the outside because when drilling this hole I chipped the formica and being the perfectionist that I am I didn't want to have that chip so I decided to drill a little bit wider and pour in some epoxy. I quite like the, the look of it so there we go. Um, the front is made of walnut. The buttons are made from aluminium. This is a digital display I'll cover later. Um, these pieces here are some aluminium extrusion which I had from a previous project where I was planning to make some some routing jigs. Um, which didn't work out in the end. But anyway, so yeah, I said about the wire. On on the side here, you can see that I'm using birch ply, everything from a 24 mil piece thick and then 18 mil thick birch ply, really nice layers. So just perfect what I needed. So here on the armature, you can see um, this epoxy knob. Now, these are custom made, and here's one here that I made earlier. And there's a separate video about making these that's already on my channel, so check that out. I'll put a link below. So this is the power supply, this little adapter. It's variable from 5 to 15 volts. Now I have it permanently set to 15 volts as using this knob here I can adjust it from 0 up to about up to about the 15 volts. Um, this display tells me the volts and the amps. Okay so this button here made from some aluminium bar attached to a latching switch and what I have is uh, a series of LED lights that runs along one of the grooves in the aluminium extrusion. It's an additional switch which enables this display here. Now this display shows the volts and the amps and this this knob here turns the volts and the amps up and down so you can adjust the voltage and fine tune it to get the exact heat that you want. To operate the wire there's a foot pedal so the wire comes up from the base here, runs over this piece here, this piece of aluminium. And what that is, it's a micro adjuster, which allows you to fine tune the 90 degree setup of the wire by adjusting two points here, loosening two points here, and it gives you left to right movement and backwards to forwards movement, like that. Okay, and then you can come in, tune your set up, check it from this angle, and then tighten it up. Okay. And now, exactly at 90 degrees, so perfect. Now this is so that I can quickly undo this wire should I want to poke it through something and cut out the centre of a piece, such as the letter A. Um, this connects to this spring here, which is a tensioner. Now this is a quick release tensioner. Just by levering up, tension is released, allowing me to undo this little bolt here. I'll try and do it so you can see. The wire can then come out, be threaded through something, come back out, over the groove. And using the, the quick release tension, I get to a position, put the thumb in place there, and then just pull it back down. So all the cables run through the centre of um, this extrusion, and this one sticking out here is just a clip to the wire to make connection. Now this is one of the things that I'll talk about improving later. So now an electric circuit's made through this armature. It's tensioned, it's got quick release, it's got fine adjust for 90 degrees, and we're ready to cut. I'll just show you where the wire goes in on the base. 
Now, I'll talk about the electrics in another video, um, in the build video, but you can see the wire comes through this piece of aluminium through and it's clamped between two washers on this bar here using another one of the epoxy knobs and the electric circuit is made here. Adjusting the angle of the arm, it's done just by loosening one of the knobs, taking it loose and tightening it because then you have a, an angle to the wire. There's an extra port just here. It's not operated by this power switch, that's literally for the display. This port here is for some add on some handheld additions, um, and I'll cover a little bit more about my plans for that later. fence that's adjustable with these and once you've locked it in position these can be picked up and rotated out of the way. Let's get on to some of the jigs. Start with the first jig. Is this? It's a 45 degree thing, but it also has the addition of a stop. Set to the distance you want. So that's the triangle jig. So I've set the fence up, close to the wire. This jig here slots in. Jig number two. Basically, this is an old extrusion. So, this jig is a circle pattern jig and it has the pin. So, we feed this edge in parallel to this extrusion. Lift it up and drop it over. And we have this locking piece here, but I won't lock it just yet. Take the, this ruler, place it to the side circle. Let's go for a 50 mil diameter circle. Move the jig up to so this distance is 50 mil from center of pin to center of wire. Lock that down. Now what we'll do is just move the fence up as a stop. Lock it down tightly. Now we can release this locking nut and, and feed in with this. We don't need the ruler anymore. So what we do need is probably this. So just to roughly work out the centre, very roughly. There we go. Okay. Check, check the wire temperature, that's too hot, I think then. So we're going to start to feed it in with the aim to push it against this fence as we feed in. We'll take the foot off the pedal just before we're fully at the fence so we don't burn the circle. Okay, now start to apply some tension and lock that down. Now we start to apply some sideways tension and then hit the pedal on the foot. And hopefully. smooth consistent rotation just let the bend of the wire catch up and I believe from watching videos the secret here is to keep cutting past and keep with until the wire has chance to pull take that out and we have 
One little line there. Need to practice. Let's see the diameter. Focal center. Exactly. Exactly 100 mil. I don't know if you saw that. 100 mil. So let's say we wanted to make a cone. That's slightly different. this to here, and not the fence, okay, so let's say we want to make a cone, just the angle, feed in, Cones. Who knows? And convex shapes, great for making molds. So this is the straight edge jig. It um, is made from two pieces of four mil thick aluminium, top and bottom, from an old uh, MacBook case. The inside is coated with 180 grit sandpaper just back from the edge, and that's to grip the foam. The underneath is coated with HDPE plastic, so it moves easy on the um, hot wire foam cutter base. It's use, it uses linear bearings and linear rails, eight mil linear rails, with drill stop drill bit stops at the top there to stop it lifting off to make it easy to move around. Um, I use some more of the aluminium extrusion that you've seen before and this little handle is from a camera jig kit um, and I've attached that to the centre at the back there to make lifting look up and down easy. So if you try and lift it at the front it just tilts but if you lift it here it's nice and easy. Inside here I just put a piece of foam at the back there to support the back so when I put foam in the front it doesn't um, tilt at the back at all. There's a slight movement in these bearings because they're quite cheap. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll show you this working now. So I place the foam in onto the sandpaper, line up the front edge based on the, the vinyl I've cut out and put in there. And then I heat the wire up. Now I've got this running quite hot, so I cut relatively smoothly. It's about eight volts. I push the wire against the top and the bottom. This way I get a dead straight edge between the front edges of this. Um, if I just used a base or a top to a piece of foam, I would get a deflection in the wire and I would get an angle. So this, this solves that problem. Nice steady pace through. Let's do the outside edges first. I'm just applying a little bit of firm pressure to the front to hold the foam in place. So yeah, I put this on push it back on the pedal to come out. Now I always like to cut with the inside, the foam I want to protect on the inside if I can. So up against it, tension. Off the pedal.
you get a deflection when when you're not using the jig. I mentioned this port here. Now I'll be able to plug in handheld devices. Using the additional port and a cable like this, I'm going to make um, some handheld devices or some additional add ons. Um, one of which will be a hot knife, another will be a shape cutting jig using some thicker nichrome wire, um, and they'll both work off of this piece of aluminium being the handle, a resistor um, inside made from the nichrome, the thicker nichrome wire, so it still works with this temperature control and then two bolts there to attach the cables either for the knife or for the, the wire that I can shape to any shape and then there'll be a piece that slides up and down this platform and locks in place up and down this handle with an angle base so that I can set the depth when I'm cutting shapes or using the knife and do dead straight cuts against a fence or, a, um, or something like that. Um, the other thing that I'm thinking of creating is a, a PVC or a plastic um, perspex bending device that will just plug into the port. All the controls will be on this um, hot wire foam cutter and that will just be a very basic unit. So yeah, that port just gives me quite a bit of functionality really. So I would change this mechanism, how this attaches to the wire here. It's a bulldog clip now, it's a bit rough. I would, I have this idea about two pieces of metal slightly bending out um, that would just slip over the wire and make a connection. Um, I would extend this, this wire here to give me a bit more room and possibly I would have it coming out of the side here rather than out the front. Along the front edge here, I possibly would include another extrusion and forego some of the design, push this down a bit and out, and that would allow um, more control using jigs like the um, circle cutting jig along the front face. I would also rework some of the electrics. As you can see, it's a little bit of a, a mess there. I'll tidy that all up in version two. And I'll put rubber feet. I will put rubber feet or rubber matting on the on the base to stop it slipping around. Um, so when you're pushing foam through, you don't get a slight shift, which can bring your item away from the fence, for example, which you may have seen during this video. Okay, so that's the hot wire foam cutter. There will be some follow-up videos. One will be the build video. It may include the electrics. That may be a separate video. And there'll also be a video about all the handheld or optional accessories using the additional port there. So be sure to subscribe, give me a like, um, please feel free to comment, ask questions and I'll try and answer them for you. But yeah, okay until my next one, take care guys.